Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory, Glory to God, God forever, forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. And, and also, also with you. you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning. For I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint 
and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us say together the portion of Psalm 145 found in the service leaflet. We will say it responsively. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and, and praise, praise your name forever, forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great kindness. A reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians. To me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and he said to them, you also go into the vineyard and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. And when he went out again at about noon, and about three o'clock he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? 
They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, you, Lord Lord Christ. Christ. One summer morning at dawn, a vineyard owner went out to the town square where he knew he'd find people looking for work. They probably weren't much different from the day laborers who line up along roadsides today, hoping for a job that will get them through another day, another week, living precarious lives, knowing from experience that they might work hard all day and then be cheated at the end of it. The the landowner hired a lucky few and sent them into the vineyard. He agreed to pay them the normal daily wage. So far, so good, an ordinary day in harvest season. But then things got a little weird. As the day went on, the landowner went back to the square at 9 and noon and 3 p.m., and each time he hired more workers. He hired the last group at 5 p.m., not long before sunset, 11 hours after sunrise, at the 11th hour. Did you know that this parable is probably where that phrase comes from? Why did he even bother so late in the day? When it came time to settle accounts, the landowner did something surprising. He paid the last group, who had worked for only an hour, a full day's wage. What a relief that must have been to workers who had spent most of the day worrying that they might find no work at all. And those who worked all day, well, they started to think that they'd hit the jackpot. How much more might they get? But when their turn came, they weren't paid any more than the late arrivals and they were furious. Of course they were furious. It wasn't fair, was it? But the landowner said to one of them, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. Several years ago, I worked for a while in a short-term job where I was paid by the hour. The work was tedious, and so I listened to books on tape during the day. On one particular day, I was listening to a recording of James Earl Jones reading the Bible. That morning, we were told that those who finished the day's work would be assigned to a new project. I wanted to be in that group, and so I worked fast, and I finished a day's worth of work in four hours. But when I told the project manager that I was done, she told me that they weren't ready to start the new project yet, and that I should go home for the day. And I was mad. I'd done a full day's work, 
and I'd be paid for only four hours, while those who worked more slowly would be paid for eight. It was outrageous, unfair. Do you see where this is going, maybe? I went back to my desk to do some final paperwork, and I put my head headphones back on, fuming. And almost immediately, the voice of James Earl Jones boomed out at me the parable of the workers in the vineyard. I made what I'm sure was a remarkably unattractive sound, half laugh, half snort, if I recall, and my anger disappeared. It was as if Jesus were talking directly to me. An hourly rate was what I signed up for, yes, and that was part of it. I wasn't being cheated. But it wasn't just that. The parable forced me to face an uncomfortable truth about myself, and I rather suspect not just about myself. When I hear the parable of the workers in the vineyard, I usually imagine myself as one of the workers hired at dawn. Like those workers, I've worked hard. And like those workers, I'm really good at seeing what's owed to me, what I've earned, what I deserve. Like them, I often assume without much thought that a benefit that comes to another somehow hurts me, is unfair to me. Like them, I'm not nearly so good at seeing all that I've been given as I am at seeing what I'm owed. I don't use the word privilege very often. I don't use the word even though the topic is important because I know that when someone tells me that I'm privileged, I often hear it as an accusation. I reflexively assume that they're saying that I've done something unjust, something unfair. And that's not anything I ever want to hear. But this parable reminds me that that isn't what privilege is all about. Privilege is much more about luck than it is about wrongdoing. You often hear people say, I've worked hard, I've earned what I have. The workers hired at dawn said it. We've worked hard. We've borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. We deserve more than those layabouts who rested in the shade all day. But here's what the workers hired at dawn couldn't see. Yes, they worked hard, but they were also lucky. Lucky if for no other reason than to be in the group that was hired first. Why were they chosen? We don't know. Maybe they were healthy and strong. Maybe they were in the right place at the right time. But they were chosen, and they spent the day without anxiety, knowing that they'd be paid at the end of it. They didn't do anything wrong, and they did work hard. They earned their day's pay. But they also didn't do anything to earn their starting place in the race. I've worked hard, but I was lucky to be born in this country and in this time. I couldn't have done the things I've done in any other time or place. I was lucky to have parents who made sure I got a good education. I'm lucky to have a skin color and a way of speaking that mean that I don't face too many barriers. I was lucky to be born with talents and intelligence. I didn't earn my starting point any more than the workers hired at dawn earned theirs. There is, of course, a purely spiritual way to understand the parable of the workers in the vineyard. God's grace is available to early arrivals and late arrivals alike, and we don't have to do anything to earn it. Grace isn't fair, and that's very good news for all of us. But my own reaction to this parable makes me think that it might also have something to say to us about how we see one another, about how we understand what justice is, about what fairness is. It might remind us to notice the gifts we've been given and not to worry so much that someone else might get something they don't earn. It might even remind us to have compassion, as the vineyard owner did, 
for those who get a late start. Jesus said that in the kingdom of God, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. In the kingdom of God, all is grace. Every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we pray for that kingdom to come on earth and not just in heaven. I hope I mean it. I hope we all mean it, even when we're the ones hired at dawn. Let us stand and proclaim our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is, seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of South Sudan. We pray for our companion dioceses in the Dominican Republic, Madagascar, the Bahamas, and Haiti. In our own diocese, we pray for St. Mark's Church, Palm Beach Gardens. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, and the clergy of this parish. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for Donald, our president, Ron, our governor, and the mayor and members of the town council. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We remember all those who are or recently have been hospitalized, especially Marcia and Chris, and those we name silently or aloud. We remember all those who are affected by the coronavirus pandemic, those who are sick and those who care for them, those who have lost their livelihoods, those who are isolated, and those who live in fear. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for all who have died, especially Troy and Jackie, and those we name silently or aloud. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. 
we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord, hear the prayers of your people, and what we have asked faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that, that we have, have sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, deed by, by what, what we have done and by, by what we have left undone. We have, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. Peace be with, peace with you, Margaret. Peace with you, Stuart. Good morning. Uh, wonderful to be uh, gathered virtually again for the celebration of the Holy Eucharist as we move into the fall season. All kinds of things ramping up uh, for programs lots of great education and, and fellowship opportunities. Please go on bbtsvirtual.org, uh, look in the email blast, because we, we started all kinds of things this week. A middle way ramped back up, uh, other adult education programs, a whole bunch of children and youth programs, and so uh, we want you to come be a part of them. Even online, we can connect, have great conversation, learn together, support one another, uh, and, and be in fellowship uh, in this time. And we are working on uh, getting back to, ways to get back together, so that's all in progress, and we'll hope to hear more about that in, a in the next couple of weeks. Anything else? Thank you. That's right. Don't forget that because, um, because we had to tent the church for termites, uh, uh, God willing, uh, this has all gone well, and we'll be back next week. <laughs> but, um, but there will not be communion this after or prayer this afternoon. Uh, we'll pick that. We, uh, if, if things go according to plan, we will pick that back up next week. Thank you for that. Anything else? Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And And also also with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It It is is right right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has died. died. Christ Christ is risen. risen. Christ Christ will will come come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who Who art art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy Thy will be done, done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore, let let us keep the feast. feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to to God. God.